Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be installing macOS Monterey in VirtualBox on a Windows 10 PC. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the minimum requirements to get this installation done. The first thing is RAM, and you're gonna need at least four gigs of RAM, but eight is recommended. 80 gigs of hard disk space is what you're gonna need. Again, 150 gigs would be recommended, and two cores available if your CPU, four is recommended, the Monterey ISO image file, and VirtualBox with the extension pack installed. Now, if you don't know how to install that, you can check out this video and I'll walk you through the steps. For everything that we're doing, I'm going to be linking it to my blog in the description below. The one thing that I'm going to caution you is the ISO file that you're using. I'm not putting it directly in the description. Some videos were taken down because of direct links like that. So I'm linking everything in my blog. If you need an image file and you don't have one, you can check out my blog for that. Installing macOS can be difficult depending on the CPU that you're using. So if you're having issues, please put your specs in the comments when you're asking questions because there's a lot of super knowledgeable people that watch these videos then they might be able to help out if you find this video useful please like and consider subscribing i'm trying to grow this channel and reach as many users as i can so with all that out of the way let's jump into the installation so we're going to begin under windows 10 desktop i'm going to open up virtualbox this is a fresh installation and what we want to do is click on the blue button over here that says new uh, then click on expert mode and the first field that it's asking for is the name of the virtual machine that we're going to be installing. So put something relevant. So we're going to put in Mac OS Monterey. It doesn't have to be exactly that, but you should know the name of that you're giving it. Below for type, we're going to be leaving it as Mac OS X and then version Mac OS X 64 bit. Below that, we have the memory size. Four gigs is the minimum amount. If you can put in more, I would take this slider all the way as far as you can. I'm going to put in eight gigs of RAM. And below, we're gonna be leaving the default for hard disk space as create a virtual disk now. Once you have all this complete, you can click on the create button. Inside this window, we wanna make sure that we leave the file location as default, but if you're running out of space and you need to store it somewhere else, you can change that here. For file size, 80 gigs is the minimum that you have, but if you, can, uh, if you have more available, I would definitely increase it. For me, I'm gonna be putting in 150 gigs. Hard disk file type, we're gonna leave that as VDI and we'll leave the storage as dynamically allocated and then click on create. Now there's a few things that we have to modify here. So we wanna select the virtual machine on the left-hand side and then click on the settings button. So we're gonna click on the system tab and under motherboard, we wanna make sure that we have a floppy unchecked and optical is selected. Everything else we can leave as is. In processors, we wanna increase this. So you need at least two CPUs. Uh, we're gonna put in four. Now there is some issues with people having installation problems installing with four CPUs. So temporarily you can decrease it. For video memory, we're gonna increase that all the way to 128 megs. And then under storage, we wanna click on the empty disk right over here. Now this is where you're gonna be selecting your ISO image file. I have mine located in my downloads folder. So if you don't already have it, you can check out my blog. The link will be in the description below so you can download your own. So we're gonna select choose a disk file. I'm gonna to navigate to my downloads folder and then get the ISO image file that I have downloaded already. Click on open. And then over here, we can just check live CD. And then under USB, uh, some people need to disable this because they're having problems with their mouses, but you can go ahead and leave that as is. And everything else we're gonna leave as default and then you can click on okay. Now that we have everything configured, what we need to do is spoof the settings. So VirtualBox thinks it's running on Mac hardware. The name of the VirtualBox is important because we're gonna be modifying that right now. So if you click on settings, you can highlight the name and then copy it because we're gonna be using that right now and then completely exit out of the VirtualBox manager. So in here, I have a file in my documents folder here, which will give me all the parameters that we need for the VirtualBox manager. This is basically, like I said, it's gonna be spoofing it to think that it's running on Mac hardware. And these are all the specs. So if you go to file and replace, we're gonna be changing the VM name. We'll be pasting in our Mac OS Monterey, exactly how it's spelt and find what we're gonna be putting in the field here that says VM name. Next, we can select replace all, and it's gonna just change those fields to now show that we're using macOS Monterey. Now, if there's any spaces or any typos in here, it's not gonna work properly. So you gotta make sure that it's spelled correctly. Next, what we're gonna do is click on the start button, type in CMD for the command prompt. We're gonna right click on it and then run it as administrator. Say yes to the prompt. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy and paste these files in. We'll copy it and then paste it. This is gonna change the directory, hit enter. And you can see the path has now changed. And now what you're gonna to wanna to do is individually paste the rest of the lines in, and I'll just speed through that. 
So all the lines have been completed. We can go ahead and close the command prompt and we can also close our notepad. Uh, we don't need to save any changes in here. All the commands have already been run and we can go back inside VirtualBox and then we can select our virtual machine and then click on start. At this point, we're gonna begin the installation phase for the macOS Monterey inside VirtualBox. The first screen that we have here is the language. So we're gonna be selecting English for this purpose and then click on the continue button. And now what we wanna do is select the disk utility. We're gonna be formatting the drive. So select that and then click on continue. Then over on the left-hand side, we wanna make sure that you select the, v, uh, the virtual disk or VBox hard disk and then click on erase. We're only erasing the virtual drive, not your hard drives, so it's fine. The name, you can put any name in here. I'm gonna put in macOS Monterey. The format type I'm gonna be selecting is macOS extended journaled. Now other users have used different types. This is what's worked for me, so that's why I'm selecting it. I like to use things that work. If you feel comfortable using something else, go ahead and do that. When it's complete, you can click on done, and then you can close out of this window. Now we're back over here, and what we can do is install macOS Monterey by selecting that option in the menu and then click on continue. So the first screen that we have is a setup screen. You can just click on continue for that. And now we have the license agreement that comes up. What you wanna do is just select agree to both of them. Now we're gonna be selecting the only drive that we have, which is a virtual drive, and then you can click on continue and it's gonna begin the setup phase. Now this will take a bit of time. Uh, it says 18 minutes here, but realistically it will take an hour, maybe two hours, it depends on your computer. As it copies and begins to go through the full installation phase, what I'll do is I'll skip to the next part. So now we're gonna be setting up some user details. The first thing that I want to do is collect your country or region. Uh, we're just gonna use the United States as a default here. For written and spoken languages, we're gonna leave it as default and click on continue. Accessibility, I'm just gonna select not now. For data and privacy, we're clicking on continue. For migration assistant, we're just gonna select not now. And for signing in with your Apple ID, if you already have one, you can try signing in. Uh, not a lot of people have success with it working properly on a virtual machine, but you can test it out. Definitely if you're signing up for a new Apple ID, it probably won't work or won't work very well. Uh, so we're gonna set up later here. And at the prompt, we're just gonna click on skip. Terms and conditions, we can just select I agree and then agree again. And now we're gonna be setting up our user account. So you can just put in your name and password or whatever you'd like in here, but please remember your password because that's what you're gonna be signing in once you've rebooted your system. Once you have it entered, you can click on continue. For location services, we're not gonna select this option. We'll just click on continue. And at the prompt, you can select don't use. So you can select the time zone that you're in and then click on continue. At analytics, I'm just gonna have them both unchecked and then click on continue. For screen time, I'm gonna select setup later. So I'm not a huge fan of Siri, so I'm gonna disable that. If you want it on, that's up to you. Once you've selected your option, you can click on continue. You can choose the theme of your computer however you'd like it. If you want it to be light, dark, or automatically switching from day and night to dark and light. Uh, once you've selected that, you can go ahead and click on continue. And for the keyboard assistant, if you wanna set this up, you can go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on quit. And we're at the desktop for Monterey. So here we are at the desktop. I'm just gonna eject the installation CD because we no longer need that. So here we go. We have macOS Monterey running inside VirtualBox on a Windows 10 PC. We're up and running and we can go ahead and start changing the settings or installing applications, whatever you prefer. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the comments below. I, I try to answer them as best as I can. Sometimes it does take me a little bit of time, but I appreciate all your support. You can also check out the step-by-step -step guides of this installation on my website, which is geekrar.com. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.